Welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday of the Advent season. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son. Today we light the fourth Advent candle, known as the candle of love. If you have a purple or blue candle or any color candle, it's time to light your candle as we listen to this psalm that describes God's love for us. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The scripture reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends our reading. The title of today's sermon is Let It Be. It comes from the scripture passage we just heard. And it also comes from a popular Beatles song. As a child, I always assumed the song Let It Be was about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Much later, I learned that Paul McCartney's mother, who died when Paul was young, was also named Mary. In a dream, Mary, Paul's mother, came to Paul. It brought him much comfort. So he wrote a beautiful song about the experience. Even though Paul's mom was named Mary and she came to Paul in a dream, I can't help but believe that Paul in his song is playing on the idea of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The organ music in the song sounds like something you would hear in church more than in the Cavern nightclub to me. And of course, by not specifically saying my mom, but rather Mother Mary, he creates a song that many people can relate to on a spiritual level. Many miracle stories involve Mary appearing to people in the sort of circumstances that Paul McCartney describes in times of trouble. Finally, I can't help but notice that the words that he attributes to his mother Mary, let it be, are words that Mary says after learning she will bear her son Jesus. Sometimes you just have to say let it be. For example, when I looked out my door last week and saw this view, you can't stop the snow from falling. You can't stop days from turning to years. God's creation is wonderful, but sometimes it is hard for us to deal with the realities of what it means to be a human. It can be hard for us to say, let it be to God, when sad things are happening to us and to people we know and love. There is much that is mysterious about the ways and the will of God. Our faith teaches us that God is good and that God is love. This is the wisdom that Mary turns to when she learns she is pregnant. Imagine learning as a young betrothed woman, that you are unexpectedly pregnant. You would feel overwhelmed. But Mary trusts the messenger of God that tells her not to fear. She instantly turns to the wisdom of letting go of her fear and her doubt and trusting in God. In this action, she is wise, well beyond her years. Right now, many of us find it difficult to let go of fear and embrace the message from God that we should not fear. What is fear? Fear is a basic survival mechanism in response to pain or the threat of danger. Common fears, like fear of certain animals and fear of heights, are passed down from generation to generation because humans that were quick to fear dangerous situations were more likely to survive to pass on their genes. 
When we are scared, our brain recognizes danger and kicks our body into high gear. Our breath quickens. We take in more oxygen. Our heart beats faster, pumping more blood to muscles and the brain. Adrenaline is released to give you more energy. Digestive and urinary system slows down. Endorphins are released to dull any possible pain. Our hair stands on end, making someone look larger. A person sweats to cool down and pupils dilate to see better. So, what is the answer to fear? It is simple, but it isn't easy. The Bible teaches us that God is love and that a perfect love casts out fear. We cannot love perfectly, but we can learn to trust in God's perfect love through our own practice of Christian spirituality. When something that is hard or sad happens, we feel the sting of the unfairness. But in those moments, it is wise to reflect about all of the unexpected blessings that God has put into your life over time. We sometimes lack a broad enough perspective. How often has something that you cursed in the moment turned out to have been a blessing in disguise. It is the practice of faith that can allow us to let go of our fears and our doubts and to embrace God's plan for our life, just as Mary embraces God's plan for her life. Even at Christmas, it is important for us to remember that we are Easter people. It is Jesus' conception, birth, childhood, ministry, and passion that leads to his resurrection. His life is a collection of wonderful and terrible moments, sometimes all mixed together. The good is often mixed with the bad. Through it all, like his mother Mary and her husband, his earthly father Joseph, Jesus provides an example of what faith can do for us. My prayer for all of us this Christmas season and for all the seasons of life to come is that we take in God's word for us and answer back to God as Mary answered. Let it be. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin. A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voice Serenely beaming with glory.
God of love, we are entering into the Christmas season in a time of uncertainty. There are reasons for hope. There are good things on the horizon for many of us. And yet we all know those who are sick, who are suffering from unemployment or underemployment, who are in difficult situations, in conflict. There are conflicts between families, in neighborhoods, in cities, between people, and between nations. God, send your love to all of us. We lift up all of those who we know who are hurting. 
and all that we do not know. Teach us to reach out with your love to all we encounter and to seek to spread your gospel message of love throughout the world, through all time. Amen. And now with the confidence that comes from knowing we are children of God, let us join together in the prayer our Savior taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. creation. Share love, joy, peace, and hope. Amen. <laughs>